Good morning to everyone who's joining us. It looks like we've got a lot of people from all over the country, but oh, all over the world. We've got London. Hi, Alex. Rex from the Philippines. Give me just one second while I while I get a chance to see if Confidence is having trouble getting reconnected. <laughs> Hi. I'm so sorry. I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So you were surprised. Yes, I was. I was absolutely surprised because. What it was, I was grateful to be a finalist. And I mean, the talents were just really amazing. Everybody was a star and an amazing person just contributing to the ecosystem. And for me, it was an honor to even be honored to become a finalist. So I, I went to the gala to meet people. Like, I just wanted to meet the amazing other women that I had been seeing on LinkedIn, for example, um, or I have been virtual friends with and never gotten the chance to physically meet. And then I get to hear the names. Okay, I hear the first 10 names called and my name is not included. So that means my name was going to be among the next 10. The next five get called. That means 15 names have been called and basically um, given a letter of recognition you know, by the Royal Marines to say, oh, thank you for your great work. And then it became the next five, the last five, like the last five names. So I, it was at that point I knew, okay, hold on. There's a chance, <laughs> there's a chance of winning this thing, you know, but it was, it was a beautiful, magical evening. Very beautiful gala. Well, you, it's a well-deserved recognition that you have done thank a you. lot of work, not just thank on you so your much. own, but, but, you know, with other people as well. And we'll talk about yeah. that in just a minute. But wow, what a year. You launched API Kitchen, which is amazing. For anyone who has not gone out and watched API Kitchen, you can find it on LinkedIn and YouTube, right? It's on your, is it CC or Sissy? CC, CC Nerd. So S I S I A R D. Yeah. Nerd TV on YouTube, um, which is Confidence's channel. It's an amazing. Um, it's an amazing series, and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. But let's go re rewind all the way back to the beginning. Kind of, how did you get your start, and what what brought you into cybersecurity in the first place? What interested you in a career here? Kristen is a very long story, but I, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that I sat down. I said, "Oh my God, I want to be in cyber." <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's going to be the biggest lie I've ever told. <laughs> It was just sheer happenstance and it was a, it's a long story. I tried to make it as short as possible. I was supposed to be a medical doctor. There's nothing wrong with being a medical doctor, by the way, but I'm just thinking back in retros in like uh when I retrospect, you know, about my life and I'm like, I wouldn't have been this happy as a medical doctor, right? I mean it's a great profession, but um I found out very early that it was my parents' dream sold to me long enough to feel like my own dream. <laughs> <laughs> I know if you're on this call, you're Asian because I see I see someone from the Philippines. So if you're Asian or you're African, you know that your parents sort of like pick your careers. Like if you talk a lot, oh, she must be a lawyer. Like she has to be a lawyer. And lawyers talk a lot. And so they start selling that profession to you over time. And so that was the case for me. My parents had really, you know, obsessed about wanting a, a doctor for so long. I was doing great in the sciences. And you're like, okay, you're going to be a medical doctor. So what happened was I took a gap year. Uh, mm -hmm. between what is called high school in the States and, you know, going to college and, uh, and going to university. And then uh, my parents were like, don't run around idle. You know, you, you know what they say about the devil's workshop. So, you know, get busy and go to a computer school. So what we used to call as, you know, academies where they learn how to use computers is we call them computer school back home in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So they asked me to go um, get busy there. That was my first time using computers in my life. It was my first time ever. So I learned how to use a computer, the basic applications, and then we graduated to learning, you know, how to code, you know, how to build applications. I learned how to code in Java, in C Sharp. And it felt like I was alive. Like, I felt alive. I was like, this is where I want to be. I want to be in technology. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have any reference points around us that I could tell my parents that um, this person succeeded in tech. So I had to get creative. Now, around this time as well, the gap year had, had finished, and then I had gotten an admission to go study medicine in university in Nigeria. So I was like, what am I going to do now? And I had to, you know, get my parents on the same, on the same, um, um, you know, stage as me, the same, um, my, the same place in my mind as, as to where I yeah. want to be. 
And so I, I could also didn't have a computer to myself. So I only have access to a computer when I go to the place I learn. So I bought some packets and I designed my slides <laughs> to convince my parents, <laughs> you know, that I don't want to do a degree in, in, you know, in, um, in medicine. I wanted to chase a career in technology. So I did this presentation to them and I think all my parents could see at that time was just passion, you know, a very passionate person. And I say this thing a lot because my mom taught me, my mom said, you cannot outperform a passionate person. So, my, yeah. So my parents were like, you know what, she's passionate about this thing. Let's let her do it. And that thing was doing um, an advanced diploma in software engineering. So I went on to do an advanced diploma in software engineering. And then I got um, a scholarship to do a first degree in IT and business information systems. So I came, I got a first class and, you know, uh, the, the, the sponsors were very happy and they sent me back for um, a master's, this time in IT management. It was during my master's that I got to hear about cybersecurity because I took an elective um, in cryptography. Ah. So cryptography, incidentally, was my entry point into cyber. And um, at the time, my, my lecturer really took interest in me, um, you know, I was the only female in the cryptography class, first and foremost. So he took interest in me and, you know, really offered mentorship. And that was where I started off my journey. I started getting, I mean, because he was mentoring me, he started giving me opportunities to try out real life projects. You know, I started getting um, side gigs and things like that to really hone my skills. So that was where I started out. It was literally uh, first getting to tech, getting the education in, and then um, interestingly, getting my hands dirty coding. And then from there on, you know, getting to know about cryptography and, you know, about cyber, um, upskilling from there on on my own and getting mentorship. And that was how I got started. That, well, cryptography is a great entry point into cyber, I think. In terms of the interesting areas of, of cyber, it's one of the most, I think, um, fascinating. So definitely. Very fascinating. Yeah, definitely can hook you, suck you in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is was part of your experience, your inspiration in 2019? I know you founded the Cyber Safe mm -hmm. Organization. Was that part mm -hmm. of the inspiration for the Cyber Safe Organization or kind of what led you to that? And let's talk just a little bit about what it does because I think the programs there are really exciting. Um, Great. So, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, for Cyber Safe Foundation, the inspiration came from um, a cyber attack that really hits ho close to home very much. Um, and then, you know, at the time I was, you know, working for a cybersecurity consulting company and leading efforts there um, in terms of protecting enterprises. And I just, when that really happened close to my family, I, I wanted to do more to protect the entire ecosystem. So I wanted mm -hmm. to then tackle many other pro problems that led to that attack that hit someone in my family. So, um, and then uh, for me, I wanted to close the gap between what enterprises were doing around cyber safety um, and then also what government was doing about around cyber safety. So that's where we start. And what we're doing is we're driving safe and inclusive access to digital across the African continent. So mm -hmm. um, our programs are generally around that. So we would build capacity. We basically would train people to take on cyber security roles and protect enterprises and would also raise awareness that helps the end user of technology as well, use technology safer. So yes, um, that has been what... what um, that's the story and really the starting point. So it was a bad thing that happened really. And I just wanted less and less people to experience that bad thing. And, and, and that's what CyberSafe, uh, that's how CyberSafe came about. And and how about the Cyber cyber Girls and Digi Girls portions of it? Yeah, like Cyber Girls. Educate people as well. Yeah, Cyber Girls has been a very interesting program for me because um, I mean, I just shared an example of being in a cryptography class. It was in the UK I studied and I was the only girl. So if you take that back home, you know that I, I, I was even, it was even worse, you know, in terms of the, uh, the numbers. And I, I like that Alex said he liked my, my sweatshirt, you know, <laughs> because it really just, you know, tells the story. 50% of the population is in, in, in Africa is female. But then um, if you look at the workforce, we only have 9% of the workforce as women. So yeah, yeah the, the numbers are really abysmal. And so for us, Cyber Girls is looking to close both the skills gap 
and the gender gap in the in the African uh, cyber uh, cyber security industry. And um, it's been a very exciting journey. We've 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 had very very we've been able to build a lot of very exceptional talents that have been really helping to keep the, the entire ecosystem safe. And we're now having those talents, you know, serve other parts of the world, which is really uh, beautiful to see. And I see some comments from George. George, we're going to talk about APIs very soon. Hi, <laughs> we're David, just about to transition, George. I promise. I promise. <laughs> um, that is actually a great transition because the next topic was yes. Um, so how did you how did you then find your way into API security and really mm -hmm. you know and then we'll we'll talk a little bit about API Kitchen and and what yeah. you're seeing in the space. Yeah. So the thing is, um, I mean, I had just shared earlier that I have a software background. So um, a software engineering background, sort of, and I came from software engineering into finding my feet in cryptography and then getting to cyber. So there's that coding background. I think that um, really helped me in a way. Uh, and we talk, we talk about cyber, we talk about transferable skills. So a lot of the, a lot of times, it just means that I came in already knowing how to use Python, how to code in Python, I knew how to you know, coding a lot of the major languages. Um, so what happened was I was really helping a lot of my friends who are developers uh, with the APIs, sort of like helping get them to be more secure. That was, that was my my point, you know. It was something that was very hobby-ish, you know, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times, I mean, we, 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 would, uh, we, could, we could talk about this, but API security, you know, has really evolved. And before, at this time, it was something that was still fresh out, you know, um, in terms of, in, in my region, especially, um, AP, security wasn't a core thing that, you know, like we have it now in a lot of the conversations. So it was something like, oh, um, can you help me do this? Oh, how would this be better done? You know, and that was how I was helping out. So I, I thought to myself, this is something that I know how to do. This is something that I have a background coding and all of that. And I could, Think like a developer um, mm -hmm. as well, while while being a security person. I so I found that that was quite an, an edge I had. So I I quickly then uh, was able to add that as one of my core skill sets. So it just came up from a hobby of helping other people um, mm -hmm. make the API secure. Yeah, I think it is a testament though, to also to your different background, because not everybody comes to cybersecurity through a development background, right? A lot of people yes. come through more of an IT management um, path and, mm -hmm. and maybe that would not lead them to the same place with API security that, that you came to. Yeah. So how about API Kitchen? Um, what led you to, it's such a unique way to speak about the, the big threats with API security and, and how attacks are formed. Um, yeah. what, what inspired you? Um, yeah, I, I don't know which side you want to hear. Is it the sentimental one or the logical one? <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> okay, I would, I would share both. Um, first things first, um, I, I started brainstorming around what I wanted to call this. And I knew for a fact that I wanted to stay on brand. Uh, I, for people who know me, um, I'm generally... Uh, I'd like to describe myself as a relatable cybersecurity leader, which means that I really like to make things relatable. I like to make cybersecurity education fun, you know, and things that people can uh, can action is what is how I share my knowledge. So I really want to stay on brand with it with the API series I was creating. So mm -hmm. I started looking for a name. And then in my brainstorming, I thought about it, I was like, come on, let's see. Cryptographic concepts, right? If you want to securely store a password, right, you will use hashing. But if you wanted to take it up a notch, what you do is you would do salting. So you would, you you add a salt, which if you are in API security, you know that. Or if you've you've taken some courses with API security, you will know that um, it's just adding a random figure, you know, a random number before the salting process happens, right? So salting was something that was part of the, you know. Is part of you know what happens in, in terms of getting um, best practice applied for securing passwords. Now, if you want to take it up a notch after salting, what do you get to do? You prepare. So you 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 add you know another figure, you know another another um, um, secret number as well. So I thought about it. And I was like, salt, pepper. The, yeah. those, are, those, are, those are food ingredients, right? So you can very much, you know, that was what sparked the whole food theme. Sure. Yeah. So, and then I started thinking about it again from a sentimental angle here. I, I come from the part of the world where women are told that 
you some people hold the view that women belong in the kitchen and and um so i wanted to play to that to that um stupid stereotype right and and that's why i wanted to do it in the kitchen so and also share that women can be anywhere they want to be women belong everywhere they want to be they belong anywhere they want to be the kitchen is one of them because we all eat food anyway (laughs) and there's nothing wrong with cooking food but also on the other leg of things we all eat food and if 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 we can relate a security to something that we all have in our lives, whether or not we know how to cook food, we know we know how to eat food, and we actually eat food. So that could be a theme from where you know I could connect with anybody across the world, different cultures or whatever. You would eat food. So that was where the food theme came from, from the very logical side of cryptography and salting and peppering to even my sentimental cultural backgrounds to um you know to then basically the food concept came from there yeah and and so i know you you've tackled a lot of the oasp api top 10 in your first in your first season um mm-hmm. which i really appreciate and you you definitely you have done an amazing job of making those concepts very relatable and very understandable to even you know to any lay person to, that that is unique and not always done especially in api security so what's on, you know, what's on deck for season two? Are you going to keep diving into the OWASP top ten? Are you going to are you going to veer off into other API security topics? What are you thinking? Yeah. So um, for me right now, what we're, what I'm going to be really focusing on in the second phase is um, doing more of the how. So okay. yeah, so showing more of the how. So uh, for the next season, um, I'm going to be doing a lot more. Uh, zooming in on best practices and then how to then implement those best practices. So there'll be a lot of walkthroughs and a lot of my videos, again, still keeping the food theme, but then with some more walkthroughs uh, running through things. And then um, and then best practices, you know, really zooming in on the best practices. So for example, one of the key issues we've seen is inventory management. So how do you make sure that you are on top of all of the APIs that you have and knowing all of them and you're inventorying them and what kind of data, for example, is going through them? Because that's another key thing, again, with data protection and privacy as a whole. Um, so all of that, what, that best, be, the best practices around that, I would just pick one, zoom in and allow people to get enough information to, to know the how. So that is really what... Um, I was zooming in 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 the second uh, in the second season. That's great, I, and I love that they're not to make it cutesy, but like bite sized snacks around the how tos and the best practices and um, the education piece. Right? It, it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that you mentioned our Appisec University earlier, which is an amazing place. I think most of the people on this call already know about Appisec University, but it is a great mm-hmm. place to go and get educated. They are much mm-hmm. deeper dive educations, though, um, than, you know, than a five, 10 minute, here's a basic introduction to this concept, which I think mm-hmm. is very needed. Um, and and oftentimes, I think, especially when you're speaking about a developer audience, they like those smaller, short snippets um, more than they like to deep dive into, a, you know, a long course. So I think it's mm-hmm. great for that. So you mentioned um, a little bit about kind of what's driving the themes for season two. What mm-hmm. what do you see? So so park all of the. I don't know how you have time to do everything that you have time to do because you do have a day job <laughs> um, on top of all of these side projects that you put yes out there. Um, yes virtual CISO and I know you just started on the board of the is it the digital some cyber, digital cyber resilience yeah digital cyber resilience board. Um, how, what are you seeing in your role as a, as a virtual CISO and in your day job as you work with organizations and really help them, you know, think about how do they build strong API security programs and what should they be thinking about? What are you seeing there? (sighs) Uh, I mean, I already hinted on one of them, but I mean, it's a very interesting space. It's a lot of changes are happening. Um, but if I was to speak about maybe three major things that I would generally see as a theme, you know, for, for a cross board. I mean, I also sit on another board that I'm not talking about. I, I, I may, I may get to announce that later on, but it's a publicly traded company and um, with APIs, you know, being 
a bulk of the way internal and external systems really do communicate with themselves. So uh, what I've seen as a common theme in my day job, interacting with other professionals and uh, on, you know, even the work that I do sitting on boards is I find that a lot of organizations, you know, don't have an inventory, don't have a full inventory of their APIs. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of APIs, you know, not within scope, and then you get to discover them after a breach and things like that. So um, inventorying is a key thing that we have, I have seen over time as um, a problem that is, isn't really maintained properly and is causing a lot of harm, you know. So inventorying is a very big issue. Uh, so I, I would generally say that um, a lot of organizations need to spend more time, you know, conducting discovery, documentation of APIs, and of course, doing risk assessment as well. Because if we can better, you know, um, inventory and assess our APIs, we are going to be in a very good place or in a much better place than we are now. Another yeah. key issue, um, I mean, which goes without saying is... Uh, a lot of organizations are not implementing very robust authentication and authorization mechanisms. So we see half and half, we see uh, poorly configured, you know, um, authorization, uh, you know, mechanisms being implemented. We, we see a lot of those issues around, you know, token management and making sure that, you know, API keys are securely stored. Um, all of those issues around, around, authorization and um, authentication are way more rampant than I would like to see and yeah. are really causing quite a lot of issues. Um, I also find that um, we're not monitoring enough. So we, we have we have a lot of APIs, for example, right? And there is nobody connecting those APIs, for example, to a SIM tool. So I, I hope I'm not speaking with jargon. Uh, I'm saying a lot of jargon. I'm hoping that the, the, the crowd here understands, you know, what a SIM is. Um, but basically, when there's an incident, we, we, there's no way that we can connect what has happened and um, tracking back to when it happened and how it happened and where it happened from. So that monitoring issue with um, with APIs is not done properly. And that's a key issue that I'm beginning to see is not done properly or is not done at all. So that's a key problem that I have seen over time. Um, another issue I have seen is we have testing done as as occasional fulfillment of compliance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the bottom. <laughs> do it. Like, yeah. It's just something that we do to tick a box or we do like we we have maybe like like event events like yeah you, you know how we have two major events in a year that's sort of like how people do api testing and that's not a good approach uh, and i i mean when we talk about shifting security left what i like to think about in that context is educating the developers to be able to have the tools and the knowledge to test before we then get on to even the security team coming in. Security team, for example, needs to come in way earlier in the design process from that stage even and just be taken along. It's not something that we slap on, okay, come and do the testing thing, you know, at the end. Sometimes it's on a weekend, please come and do the testing thing, you know. And there's not enough time to remediate even vulnerabilities, assess the production, uh, production, um, uh, you know, the whole production very well. So it's it's quite, it's, it, it's it's like an afterthought and it's a common thing that I'm seeing as well. But I think that, you know, putting that power in the hands of the developers and I dare say even non-technical uh, people within the, the uh, development team, why are we not helping product managers, for example, better understand API security? You know, um, why are we not helping product owners better understand um, API security as well? So those are the issues that I am getting to see. Three major issues, if I was to name them, that I would say are, are major challenges. Yeah, and I do think you know, we there. If 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 you if you haven't started on, and I know Confidence has, we'll talk about that in a minute. But if you haven't started on any of the AppySec U um, courses, they are all free. And the fundamentals course is a great place to start for all three of the topics that you just mentioned, confidence, because it really does dive into you know, the three kind of what, what they term as the core pillars of API security and that, you know, the, the governance piece or understanding what you have, where it is, putting guardrails around how you document things, um, you know, and, and testing and then monitoring as well are all covered. 
and it's a great accessible course. Um, it's I think it's only about 90 minutes, so it's a great place to start if you're just getting started and, and need that kind of grounding in all of the topics that you just discussed. Mm -hmm. um, and just speaking about just knowing, you know, the APIs that you have, I mean, how can you secure something you, you don't know about, for example? Um, so those are the, those are the issues. Um, there's, there's also a lot of issues I see around even versioning and backward integration as well, you know. Um, we're not protecting the older versions. So we have, for example, you have your APIs, um, the newer versions, you know, behind the firewall, and you find that an older version doesn't have that kind of protection, you know, but it's sitting somewhere in your environment and it's accessing live data, it's accessing production um, data as well. So that's a big problem and a common theme um, I'm seeing, especially, you know, these days I'm seeing it with even fintechs, you know, very regulated spaces that you should think uh, would take this thing seriously. So, yeah, I think that we need to do more. <laughs> Maybe we need to scream API Sec University needs to scream. Come take some free courses and know better. <laughs> We're trying. We're trying. Um, and, and, you know, I think that there, it is getting traction. What are you seeing, you know, you mentioned it a little bit with um, CISO visibility, but are you seeing more support at that CISO and board level for API security, um, you know, programs and funding and, and training, all of the above? Are you, are you starting to see more of a groundswell for that? Because I know, you know, when we talk with the market, sometimes it's, it's always in the top five, but we're, any of us in security know that that top five is probably a, a pipe dream. So are you seeing it be more of a priority at organizations or is it still sort of in that nascent, they're just learning about what they don't know stage? Um, I think it's, it's starting to be a priority. Um, and maybe this is one of the ways that COVID was one of the few ways COVID was a good thing. Uh, <laughs> so there was, a, there was a lot more acceleration of digital transformation, which was enabled by, uh, you know, a lot of microservices, you know, coming into the picture for a lot of organizations, um, a lot more emphasis on, um, yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm seeing something on the chat, a lot more emphasis on the, on APIs and a lot of, you know, a lot of systems became digital. So with all of that and the attacks, you know, that had preceded even the pre-COVID, a lot of the attacks, and then how COVID itself caused the, the whole world to see, you know, the importance of digital and how um, that could be all we have in some days, literally all we have and all the, the only option we have. And I, I, I also think that COVID got to make us see that um, the workplace isn't in the block walls of a building. Uh, you know, because a lot of times, a lot of the APIs that were in China, you know, you were, you were consuming them within the confines, you know, of a physical building, you know, it was easier to protect. But now the attack surface has really widened, you know, it's been widened by higher adoption of APIs, it's been widened by the fact that work is in a place, work is now um, something you do from anywhere, right? So all of those sort of influences have, have driven um, the importance of securing APIs as the gateway um, to, you know, a lot of transactions, a lot of data flows. Um, there's also a, a key thing that's happened as well in this time. Um, a lot of regulation, data protection regulation has been adopted in a lot of countries, uh, way more than we saw pre-COVID as well. So I'm going to be saying pre-COVID and post-COVID a lot because sure. <laughs> that, that was a significant time. So um, that is also gaining, because of that, um, it is also gain momentum because then we all know that the most sensitive data in an organization, most of them would go through an API. So um, for that reason as well, APIs is starting to get starting to get some um, um, some priority uh, on in the on the boards of different organizations. I would, however, add a caveat that we are not seeing uh, as much funding as I would like to see, except you know after a breach. So we've had yeah. a lot of high profile breaches yep. and then everybody says, oh my God, now we need to sit up. Now, how did that get to happen? Oh, it's an API, you know, and then um, there becomes, uh, you know, a lot of push to get to get things to a better place. So I I'm hoping that we have, you know, we get to mature to the point where one, we are not compliance driven in our API security efforts. Two, we are not threat 
uh, uh, threat uh, incentivized to then take API security, security more seriously because those are the two issues that we're seeing where um, uh, a breach incentivizes the company to then invest in this very top attack vector and protecting their environment. And then uh, we also see compliance being then a major driver. Now, that's not a, entirely a bad thing in terms of compliance, because again, compliance can be a starting point. We see that, for example, with PCI and um, and how that the, the uh, 4.0, for example, has changed and now has uh, a lot around uh, APIs and securing them. So that can be, you know, a good place to start off from. So we give, I would say, compliance. Thank you very much for bringing this and making sure that it's part of what we must do. But I mean, going past that, we need to really, really embrace API security as something that is normal to do, whether we're taking a box or not, and really putting our efforts to to mature from compliance to um, a lot more. Because let's be honest, compliance is actually like a base, a base requirement, it's base, basic minimum. Um, in terms of what must be done to secure APIs. We need to go past that. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, I think that until until security, especially with APIs, becomes as central to the notion of good code and, and yeah. solid applications, you know, it's, it's sort of like it should just be built in at the core and it should be part of this doesn't go live unless mm -hmm. it's secure. But I just we're a ways away from that for sure but getting yeah. there and you're right i think compliance has a great you know it's at least a starting point and it's a good starting point often retroactive um in terms of people going oh we need compliance around this because there have been too many breaches i like i think of it almost um similar to building physical buildings right if you think of mm -hmm. um uh, you know sound strong safe secure building structures to withstand hurricanes, right? You could have people who build the strongest structure in the world. Um, that's going to be expensive. It's going to take a lot of time and it's going to be very rare. Almost nobody's going to do it, right? Versus the people who build the shoddiest, but hope that their insurance, you know, they just want it fast, uh -huh. habitable, inhabitable. And mm -hmm. they just hope that if something ha bad happens, insurance will cover it, right? I feel like mm -hmm. that's very similar to the way a lot of us have treated API security. And it's like, well, hopefully if something bad happens, um, our cyber insurance will cover it and it won't be too bad and we can rebuild. Um, and I think that compliance is sort of that, that intermediary step, which starts to say, you know what, we can't cover everyone and their shoddy, shoddy building practices. You know, you're at risk, you know, you're building in a, you know, in a hurricane prone zone, you, you mm -hmm. have to build with stricter codes and better mm -hmm. practices because we can't pay for every single structure every single time it falls down and I think that's sort of to me that's that's the compliance piece and that's what I mean by it lags a little bit as I feel like compliance gets stronger after a bunch of bad things happen <laughs> Um, and, and I like the fact that you use the analogy of, your bu of a building because that's a fantastic analogy there um, I, I started this cartoon series I don't know if you started to see them um, I posted one one of them two days ago, and the next one I have coming up is actually a building that I, I have as my analogy, you know, and it, it just really shows how we get to slap on security later on, you know, as something that, okay, we need to just shine that shoe. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I want to open it up for questions from, from the group, because I know everybody is excited to, to get to ask you a few things. But before we do that, I wanted to, you know, we mentioned Apisec University, but what other courses, what other resources are out there that, you know, for all of the people who are on the call who are just getting started or just starting to learn about API security, um, all the way up to those who are looking to become, you know, the next level experts, where do you go to educate yourself? What resources are out there that they can, or groups that they should be part of, um, mm -hmm. specifically around API security? Okay, so I would say, still goes without saying, API Secuni, you know, it should definitely be a place that you go to. Um, if I were you, I would finish up all of the courses that they have available um, to learn for free, which is a very good place to 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 start off from. I mean, that, how are you guys so generous? <laughs> I want to ask that question. Well, how are you guys so generous? 
<laughs> I mean, I'll let Dan, Dan can address that on, on a webinar, but really, I think it's about just seeing a huge gap in the market and, and a passion project. You mentioned passion at the beginning, right? A, truly yeah. a passion project for Dan and Corey. So Dan Barahona and Corey, Corey Ball, who founded AppySec University, truly just, you know, and, and none of us had any idea that it would blow up as big as it has. There's, we have, we're just under 60,000 course registrants wow. other students at this point, wow. which just is a testament in a, in a year to how mm -hmm the knowledge gap is and how much people are, you know, really just searching for any resources to help them understand this, this space. And so it's kind of grown from there. Um, but one of the commitments in, in starting it was to make mm -hmm. it accessible, accessible. and um, relatable as possible, similar to yeah. your ethos. It's, it's, it's only as good as it is accessible. So mm -hmm. we're keeping it free and certainly you know we've launched a few paid certifications that are you know that are higher level certifications but all of the main courses will always be free excellent so um i think that api sec university is a good place to start off from um i also would recommend um that you listen to podcasts uh, um the a lot of good podcasts on api security i think there is one called um API interface, something like that. Um, you could have a look at that. There's also um, a lot of blogs that I would highly recommend. Top on that list would be Dana, Dana Epps blog. I think I'm going to drop the link on the. I'm just going to drop a link on the on the on the chat box. Uh, and of course, my YouTube channel. <clears throat> it's the Senior TV. So have a look at that as well. Um, I find white papers by vendors also very good. So look at the major vendors like Sol's, you know, they have white papers. No Name has white papers, you know, just look at those white papers quite a lot. Um, YouTube has quite a lot of very interesting content from conferences like API Days, for example, um, you know, just API Sec as well um, in terms of the conference. So Check out conferences. A lot of conferences have quite a lot of information. Um, if you also check out the OAP's website, you know, the OAP's foundation, for example, check out their website. Read deep into the, um, the cheat sheets, for example. Uh, really just zoom into the CVs. You get to learn quite a lot around um, APIs and API security, generally speaking. So deep dive in on, on OAP's website. That would be a great place as well. Books are also a fantastic place to go. Cory Ball is an amazing author that you should definitely check out his book on API pen testing. So um, books are a great place. Um, there are, and there are many books, really. Um, you could look at, um, I think there's an author I, I'm trying to remember. I think he's Brian Morley. Check out Brian Molly. I think I've read one of his books. I've read his books before. I've read a book from him. Um, I think there's another one I'm trying to remember, but it has something to do with um, API security in mo yeah, API security in motion. So you want to check that out as well. Um, so check out the books. Check books are a fantastic way to also learn. So generally speaking, blogs and websites, conferences, or oh, on online courses as well. I would highly recommend that you check out. Um, plural sites and Udemy. Um, there are quite some nice courses you could you could take up there. There's also um, Practical DevSecOps as well. You want to check out that website as well. Although the courses are expensive, but yeah, um, uh, you, you, th those are all areas that you could learn um, API security from. So the tools also are a very good place to learn API security from. So um, say Postman, for example, um, Postman does have um, you know a website that you can learn a lot about API security and how to implement, um, basically implement security in your, in your production environment. And for forums, I don't have anyone ready to, ready like top of my mind to share, but I mean, you could Google, just, just what I would say is really just um, um, use Google, Google search quite a lot and you will find forums, you would find groups on LinkedIn, for example, um, you could find uh, forums on on um, uh, that you can join as well. Yeah, and I know um, I don't know if you're active in the group, but for anyone who wants to become part of it, I'll drop a link um, in the chat. There's a Discord group specific to AppySec University, and I, you know, I, I'm 
yes, Robert, Burp Suite is a great tool as well. Burp Suite, yeah. yeah. For sure. Burp Suite is good. Yeah, With fantastic plugin by plugins, by the way. Lots of plugins, lots of plugins that really work well. Yeah. And if you if you go take the pen testing course by um, Corey, or if you read Hacking APIs by Corey Ball, he does a lot of deep dive into how he uses Burp Suite as a pen tester um, to test APIs. So I think that that's a that's a great resource as well. Um, and tutorial on how to make the most out of it, which is awesome. And yeah, so what I was saying, we, we will drop a link to the Discord group in just a minute, but that Discord channel, it's it's a really supportive channel, which is awesome because they, you know, they tackle this all day, every day. It tends to be a lot of pen testers, a lot of people who are out there um, trying to hack APIs or trying to test APIs and great, you know, great set of knowledge, knowledgeable resources that will be happy to dive in and help you tackle those challenges and, and point you to other resources as well. Um, Yes, port swigger. Yep. Um, there, there's. I think there's a lot of free education out on port swigger as well. A lot. Uh, so port swigger academy is is a good place as well. So I, I think I mentioned that somehow earlier on, but didn't quite emphasize it. So you want to check those out. I think tools generally um, would have some information to really help you um, sure. navigate them and learn more about them. But yeah. I, I personally like web search because <laughs> the plugins. <laughs> yeah, the extension, sorry. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a great it's a great tool. And it's where it's what sort of the bread and butter for a lot of people that are doing this day in and day out and and you know trying to solve these challenging problems. Um I that that's the end of the of the questions that you and I had talked about and that I have. Um if anyone has any last questions for confidence, feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise, what are your, where are you going to be speaking next and where can we go? <laughs> I know you've got a million social channels. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll put a link. And, and even if we are, if we wrap this session, I just want to let everyone know in the chat, the chat stays live and the session stays live on this link. So you can come back and watch, rewatch any of the session that you missed. And all of the links in the chat will stay live as well. So we'll drop the links, even if we missed them the first time around, we'll make sure that we that we post everything here. Um, oh, you can start API hacking from scratch on, I think the API security or API, <laughs> AppySec University website, um, pen testing uh, course is a great place mm -hmm. to start API hacking from scratch. It walks you all the way through from zero to, um, to setting up your own systems and and really getting in and, and diving deep into hacking APIs yourself. Mm -hmm. but, but back to you, Confidence. So where can we find you next? We have your YouTube channel. Um, you're super active on LinkedIn and Twitter. So if you're not following Confidence on LinkedIn or Twitter, you should be because she's, she posts a lot every day. But where else are you speaking coming up? Um, um, I think I have RSA coming up in in um, November. Funny thing, I'm talking about APIs as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to be in Nashville this month. Um, I'm going to be in Ghana as well this month. So uh, it's, it's, I have a couple of those lined up for um, this period. And I'm very excited, you know, to just be able to share about APIs um, and securing them as well. Um, and just also have the years of um, leaders across, you know, across different organizations. I, I think I have an, I have a corporate as well, a, a top um, telecom company that I'm also speaking to the leadership as well around API security. So I'm very excited about the speaking engagements I have queued on. We have a quick question. Um, John, I saw your question on uh, GitHub scanners. I'll, I'll put some out there. I know that there are some places on GitHub where you can invoke free scanners. We actually have a free scanner link on the AppySec University website as well. Um, and Burp Suite has a, a free scanner as well. And I think using all of them, you know, probably valuable, at least as a jumping off point and seeing where they'll get yeah. you. We'll share something really quick, confidence for you. For anyone who hasn't been out on API, <laughs> we have a little club that that we just coined about a month ago called Five for Five Club. So people who have graduated all five of the courses available and 
Confidence is, is one of our five for five members. So, you know, if you want to learn everything there is to know about API security, follow in Confidence's footsteps. <laughs> and there are, we've launched a few new courses out there, um, challenges and a certification course that, that actually um, does cost money. And we're going to do a giveaway with Confidence. So watch her social channels and... Um, you know, and follow her there and we'll, we'll give away some of those, um, you know, some scholarships to those programs for anyone who's listening to this. this <laughs> so with that, I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll wrap it for today. Thank you so much confidence for sharing your story with us and some tips and tricks and, you know, how, how people can get started. I know that we have a lot of people who are passionate followers of what you do and, you know, they aspire to, um, a similar, you know, a similar path. So hopefully this has given them a little bit of inspiration and knowledge to do so. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed the chats. It's been amazing. We'll, we'll watch for the next episodes of API Kitchen. Super excited. Me too. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a great day or evening, depending on where you're where you're joining from. Have, yeah. have a good one. All right. Thank you.